I fought for God. Who do you fight for, Exile? Hello and welcome to another Path of Exile build guide. With Blight League bringing a lot of changes to summer, it's a perfect time to revisit and update one of my most popular builds, the Zombie Mancer. This 2.0 version of the build is way stronger than the previous one and at the same time easier to play and gear up for. Recent improvements to minion AI also make your zombies spend much more time actually dealing damage to enemies rather than being some lazy bums. Whether you're already familiar with the older version of the build or this is completely new to you, this updated guide will tell you everything you need to know to play it like a pro. So here's a high level breakdown of the build's capabilities. This is one of the most powerful summoner builds of any kind out there. Once you have the 6 empowered zombies out, they will obliterate everything in their path. They are equally effective at quickly clearing large packs of mobs as well as killing bosses all the way up to uber elder. Your minions are incredibly resilient, being able to face tank pretty much everything thrown at them. They have very large health pools, capped resistances and huge amounts of life regen, so even in the toughest fights it will be enough to pull them back for a second or two in case they are in grave danger. The build is designed to be very easy to play without having to cast specific sequences of spells or combos that are generally the staple of minion builds. After summoning your small army, pretty much everything after that is automated. While it does require quite a few mandatory uniques, they're all pretty common ones which are generally cheap even in the first days of a new league. As such, it is more than a decent starter build which can be easily funded as you progress to the game. Endgame min maxing and best in slot items with very high affix rolls will be rather expensive, but I did manage to kill the Shaper with a 5 link and all my gear costing less than 2 exalts in total. With proper investment and a bit of practice, you'll be able to clear all content in the game. However, there are two map modes that you should avoid as they cripple the build too much. Physical damage reflect will kill your zombies quick and no mana regen makes it impossible for you to cast anything as your mana pool is quite small. This being said, let's see how you go about getting all that. The guide is divided into 7 main sections, Build Overview, Passive Tree and Leveling, Ascendancy, Pantheon, Gems and Links, Gear, Flasks and Jewels and finally Pros and Cons. In the video description below you'll find a link for importing the entire build guide in the Path of Building tool. It includes the Passive Tree broken down into level brackets, example gear and a detailed notes section on gearing, stats priorities and gems. With that out of the way, it's time to lay out the build overview. The build revolves around summoning zombies and then using specific pieces of gear, auras and other minions to greatly buff them. Zombies are a permanent type of minion, meaning they do not expire or have a limited duration and they persist when changing zones. However, they do not survive logging out and will have to be resummoned when coming back online. Summoning a zombie requires a corpse which can belong to a dead monster or created with a spell such as Desecrate. The level of the corpse, the map where it was created or the monster it belonged to have absolutely no influence on the resulting zombie. Its stats depend strictly on the gem level as well as the support gems and other buffs. By default, zombies use a standard attack and an area of effect slam skill, both dealing physical damage. As such, most gems that affect attacks, physical damage or area of effect can be used to support the zombie gem and in turn the summon minions themselves. For example, when using ruthless support gem, every third attack of each zombie will be a ruthless blow, dealing more damage. Normally you are able to summon 7 zombies, but through several passives and the Baron Helmet, that number is increased to 12. To get there, you'll need to stack up at least 900 strength, a completely realistic number which is not too difficult to achieve while still maintaining very solid defenses and utility. The helmet also grants half of your strength to all minions, thus also boosting their HP and physical damage. Moreover, when you get 1000 strength, 2% of the damage dealt by zombies is leached back to you as life. This is an excellent defensive mechanism which will help you survive a lot of incoming damage. Then, by equipping Montegrul's Grasp Scepter, you end up with 6 zombies but each dealing twice as much damage. Even if it seems like the DPS output will be the same, in reality you end up with much better applied damage, since 12 zombies would not fit around most targets causing a lot of them to just stand around doing nothing. On top of that, this weapon also provides large defense bonuses for the zombies as well as causing any enemies killed by them to explode dealing fire damage to other nearby monsters. That generally leads to a huge chain reaction which clears entire packs in a split second. Gathering all this strength opens up the possibility of using items such as Joffrey's Sanctuary Armor and Shaper's Touch Gloves to gain over 3000 energy shield. This is a huge amount considering you don't need to invest any passive points for it. In addition, you'll make use of several other minions such as Spectres, Animated Guardian, Carrion Golem, Skitter Bots and Holy Relic which act as buff bots that further increase zombies DPS as well as defenses. Finally, you top it all off with a few auras, a pretty obvious choice for a build that revolves around minions. 
While it sounds like a lot to take in, don't worry, as always I will talk about all these in much greater details in the passives, gems and gearing sections respectively. And speaking of that, let's actually start with the passive tree and leveling. Starting off as a witch, in Act 1 you immediately go for a few significant passives such as Grave Intentions and Lord of the Dead. These will boost the max number of zombies as well as their damage and defenses. However, you'll likely notice that at this stage in the game your zombies tend to die quite easily and you need to resummon them often. They also don't deal too much damage yet and this will be the case up to around level 25. As such, I recommend you temporarily level up using Freezing Pearls or Arc until then. You can have zombies and skeletons around as meat shields but don't rely on them to do much else yet. You can also use summon raging spirit if you prefer having a more summoner vibe from the very beginning. That being said, moving on to Act 2 you'll get some HP and resistances through cruel preparation and its adjacent nodes while pathing towards the excellent death attunement minion will. This will grant you an additional zombie as well as boost their damage and life. This act also brings with it the deal with the bandits quest and the decision here is quite simple, kill them all. The bonuses they would provide are entirely useless for summoners, so the two passive points are clearly the way to go. In Acts 3 and 4, continue buffing your zombies by taking notable passive Spiritual Command and Sacrifice. Then stop by and grab Quick Recovery to get a bit of life and mana regen for yourself. Lastly, invest into Ravenous Horde Cluster, greatly improving minions' movement speed and granting them a chance to gain Onslaught when killing enemies. This buff further increases their attack and movement speed. Going through Acts 5 and 6, take Enduring Bond Will, Retribution and Align Spirits for some overall minion damage. As encounters get a bit tougher, Discipline and Training comes in handy as a significant boost to your own HP. At this stage in the game you should be more or less in full summoner mode and not dealing any direct damage yourself. As such, it is a good time to take Elemental Equilibrium Keystone. This is quite a straightforward passive. When you deal damage with a certain element, let's take for example fire, so when you deal fire damage to an enemy, Elemental Equilibrium increases that monster's fire resistance while lowering their cold and lightning ones by a very large amount. So how is this useful? When you pair your zombies with Hatred Aura, they deal additional cold damage on top of the default physical. If you, the summoner, deal fire or lightning damage to enemies, Elemental Equilibrium lowers their cold resistance, greatly boosting the damage dealt by zombies. Thankfully, minions themselves do not trigger Elemental Equilibrium in any way, but they do benefit from its effect. I will however talk a bit more about triggering Elemental Equilibrium in the gems and gearing sections respectively. In Act 7 and 8, continue buffing your zombies both defensively and offensively with Indomitable Army and Grave Pact. The first brings a large amount of life, resistances as well as physical damage reduction while the second will take care of your boy's accuracy. Finally, balance it out with a bunch of strength, life and energy shield for yourself through devotion and sanctity. As you approach the end of story mode and difficulty starts ramping up, it's a perfect time to invest in some HP through Purity of Flesh, Heart of the Warrior and Warrior's Blood. Then take the first two jewel sockets of the build at the top and left side of the starting area on the passive tree. Drop an efficient training jewel in each of them and this will convert all intelligence from their radius into strength. It is critical to understand that you cannot simply move these jewels somewhere else in the tree. Since they only work on passives inside their radius, the goal is to place them in optimal sockets and obtain as much strength as possible. If you can't yet find or afford these, then temporarily use some random jewels that buff your defenses or minions DPS. Progressing towards level 80, first get the jewel socket at the right side of the starting area, dropping yet another efficient training jewel in it. Then grab two more sockets where you can use regular jewels. As you approach level 90, you need to focus on your defenses as well and melding cluster as well as constitution will take care of that. You also get a decent amount of strength on the way which is always welcome for this build. Finally by level 95, barbarism and an additional jewel socket are pretty much the best options. If you feel like pushing to level 100, then Fearsome Force Will is likely your best bet. And that's about it for the passive tree and leveling. In the next section, I'll be covering the Ascendancy class which improves pretty much every single aspect of this build. Summoning dead stuff to fight for you is clearly the signature of a necromancer, so that is what you'll be picking as the Ascendancy class. First points go to Mindless Aggression, a clear cut and efficient passive. It simply buffs the damage as well as attack and movement speed of your minions, nothing really complicated. After completing Cruel Labyrinth, spend the points on Unnatural Strength which grants plus 2 levels to all active minion gems you're using. While this doesn't seem like a big deal, bear in mind that minions actually gain most of their damage and HP from gem levels. Even if this bonus doesn't apply to support gems, having higher level zombies, specters and animated guardian will make them much more resilient. 
The third passive is Bone Barrier, a really strong defensive layer for both yourself and your minions. First you get a whole bunch of physical damage reduction, life and energy shield recovery and elemental resistances. This will make it much easier to focus your gear on strength rather than wasting affixes on resistances. In addition, you also get the Bone Armor skill. When activated, it creates a shield on yourself and each of your minions absorbing up to 2200 damage from hits. It even removes bleeding and provides immunity to it for the buff's duration, which means you can even save an affix on your life flask. With the final ascendancy points, grab Mistress of Sacrifice. This might be a bit surprising, but thanks to it, you'll be able to survive huge hits that would otherwise instantly kill you. With this passive, Spirit Offering will apply to you as well at 75% efficiency. In practice, it acts as a very strong instant energy shield heal. I will go into greater details about it in the gem section, but for now I just need to add that this is one of the most important defensive mechanisms of the build. With the ascendancy out of the way, we can take a quick look at the Pantheon choices. Generally speaking, Pantheon choices are situational and there isn't a best pair that will outperform all others in any scenario. However, there are certain options that complement specific builds quite well in a wide range of situations. For this particular case, here are my recommendations. For the Major God, Soul of Lunaris. It's probably the best defensive pantheon for builds which operate mostly in melee range. Since you'll be using Shield Charge to apply Elemental Equilibrium, you'll end up in the thick of things quite often. As for the Minor God, the optimal choice is Soul of Shakari. Chaos damage bypasses Energy Shield and Poison in particular is encountered quite often while mapping, so it is always a good idea to reduce a type of damage that can ignore about half of your effective HP. Having covered the Pantheon choices, we can now focus on one of the most important aspects of any build, Gems and Links. As usual, I'll start with the main skill, Raise Zombies and its support gems. First in line is a very simple and obvious choice, minion damage support adding a huge amount of damage without any downside. The second support is melee physical damage, yet another clear cut DPS boost. By default, zombies deal only physical damage, so this gem will have excellent effectiveness. Third in line is Feeding Frenzy, an interesting addition to a summoner's arsenal. Its first benefit is that it makes link minions act aggressively. Instead of just hanging around you, they will actively seek and attack enemies from greater distance. This solves one of the main issues that summoner's builds had in the past, the overall passiveness of minions. On top of that, your zombies will grant you the aptly named Feeding Frenzy buff, which further increases all minions' damage, movement and attack speed. Next support gem, Minion Speed, is a mix of damage and utility. While there are better damage gems on paper, zombies have to actually get in melee range to hit anything. In practice, every second they spend traveling between targets is a second they are not dealing damage. This gem will greatly minimize this downtime and significantly boost your clearing speed. And the last one is Ruthless, which will transform your zombies every third hit into a ruthless blow, dealing vastly more physical damage than normal. If you find your zombies dying quite often, you can replace this 6 gem with Fortified Support which should take care of their survivability. The next gem setup brings 5 additional minions whose sole purpose is to buff the zombies and yourself. This must be socketed in the helmet slot in order to get the plus 2 levels to minion gems bonus. First is Animate Guardian, one of the most interesting minions in the game. It is summoned by using items dropped on the ground which the resulting minion will actually equip and use. As such, you want to give him gear that grants bonuses to allies, aka you and the other minions. I will go over the best items to be used by the Guardian in the gearing section. For now, I'll mention that it can use weapons, shields, helmet, body armor, gloves and boots. However, be warned that if the animated Guardian dies, all its gear is permanently lost. While leveling, only give it random rare items or cheap uniques that you don't need or would otherwise vendor. Later in the game, with enough minion defensive and health passives as well as leveling the gem itself, the Guardian will have over 70,000 HP and survive pretty much anything. At that point, it's worth giving it more expensive and better items that will greatly buff the other minions. The second gem in this setup is Ray Spectre, another really cool minion which is summoned using the bodies of dead monsters. As the name suggested, this minion is a ghost of that respective monster and unlike zombies, it will inherit all the attributes and skills it had while it was alive. Since you're not looking for damage dealing specters, but rather ones that will help the zombies, the best options are 2 Carnage Chieftains and 2 Mortality Experimenter. The Chieftains periodically cast a spell which grants Frenzy Charges to all allies. These provide a great deal of damage and attack speed, excellent for both yourself and the rest of the minions. As for Mortality Experimenters, they curse enemies with temporal chains, drastically reducing action speed, a great defensive tool in your arsenal. On top of that, they also blow up corpses, negating some of the more dangerous on-death effects of certain enemies. Carnage Chieftains can be found in Act 2, Old Fields area and the Experimenters in Act 3, Lunaris Temple Level 1. 
Bear in mind that it's not necessary to actually go kill these mobs to obtain their corpses. It is sufficient to teleport in these areas and cast Desecrate. This will spawn corpses that belong to that zone. Hold A key pressed and select the appropriate corpse, then cast Ray Specter. And that's about it. The good part is that once a certain monster has been added to Desecrate's corpse pool, it will appear when using the skill in other areas as well. Anyway, don't worry too much about this entire process since Specters will die very rarely, if at all, unless you really mess something up. Now coming back to the gem setup, so far you have Animated Guardian and Ray Spectre. The third gem is Blood Magic. This allows your Spectres to spend a small amount of HP instead of mana to cast their spells. This is quite an important piece of the puzzle since you want them to constantly spam their abilities. The last gem in this setup is Minion Life Support. These summons are not there to deal damage but only as sort of buff bots so you need to make sure they survive. You also don't want to go through the hassle of resummoning them too often or losing gear from Animated Guardian. Next we have the movement skill setup and for this build it will be shield charge. Apart from the obvious purpose of moving around faster, this is also used to proc elemental equilibrium by dealing a small amount of lightning damage and thus decreasing monsters fire and cold resistances. It is also an additional way to hurt your zombies and tell them what to attack. Normally they go about their business on their own but if you attack a monster they will immediately prioritize that target as well. Then you link this gem to Fortify Support which will grant you the buff with the same name, providing 20% damage reduction from hits. Lastly, add faster attack support to make charging significantly faster. Up next is a cast when damage taken setup. The first trigger gem is Convocation, a spell which will summon all your minions around you and grant them a life regen buff. This is a great defensive mechanism as you practically gain a zombie meat shield around you and they will also quickly kill whatever was hitting you. Then add Desecrate to spawn a whole bunch of corpses acting as fuel for the next gem. This last gem is Spirit Offering which will be using these corpses to grant a large chunk of energy shield to minions based on the number of corpses consumed. They also get a whole bunch of resistances and a big added chaos damage buff. And since you took Mistress of Sacrifice passive from the Ascendancy, these buffs will also apply to you with 75% effectiveness. Combine these with Bone Armor and you and your boys will be nearly invincible. Up next are the auras. First is Hatred which provides a large amount of cold damage to zombies based on their physical damage. This is then linked with Generosity support. The first obvious reason is that it further increases Hatred's damage bonus. The second is that it prevents the aura from adding cold damage to your own attacks. As I mentioned earlier in the guide, you want to deal only lightning damage so that elemental equilibrium lowers the cold and fire resistances of monsters you hit. If you had Hatred aura active on yourself, it would completely ruin this mechanism. Then add Dread Banner, an aura which gives your minions a small chance to impale enemies. Without going into details, impale is a sort of physical damage over time debuff with some extra steps. Since physical is your zombie's main damage type, this aura is really powerful for such a small investment. The last aura is the very interesting summon Skitterbots. In practice, this summons two permanent and invulnerable minions. The first one generates a chilling aura, reducing enemies' movement and attack speed, while the second shocks nearby enemies, greatly increasing the damage they take from any source. A great 2-in-1 defensive and offensive aura for a decent mana reservation cost. Do note that this aura is not affected by generosity, so it's not necessary to link it with the other gems. It can even be placed in a separate item, it doesn't really make any difference. There are three other mandatory gems that also do not need to be linked with anything and you can just squeeze them wherever you have any free sockets. First is Summon Carrion Golem which provides a strong physical damage buff to your other minions. The golem itself also deals decent damage but that's just icing on the cake. Then you have Summon Holy Relic, a tiny minion who follows you around and casts a nova spell whenever you hit an enemy granting life regeneration to all allies. This buff has increased effectiveness on other minions helping them survive even more damage. Third gem is Flame Dash. While some might consider this optional, the impact it has on map clearing speed is so large that you can't really drop it. The simple fact that it can be used to bypass obstacles and climb ledges is sufficient to earn its socket. Finally, if you have any free sockets left, add another high level convocation spell for manually recalling your zombies and making them follow you more easily. This is only a quality of life addition to the build and only fits if you have an unset ring for the extra socket. In this section, for each gear slot I will outline 3 tiers, basic, mid tier and best in slot. As a general rule of thumb, prices increase significantly with each tier but so do the benefits that the items bring. You don't care at all about any kind of affixes that add damage to yourself but only ones granting attributes, defenses and maybe some minion damage or movement speed if you can afford those. The absolute number one priority however is to gather at least 1000 strength for the full benefit of the Baron Helmet. This is the build's linchpin item and completely mandatory. 
as its description is saying, you are allowed to summon an additional zombie for each 300 strength you have. Half of your strength is added to each minion, increasing their life and melee physical damage. Also, when reaching the 1000 strength mark, 2% of the zombie's damage will be leashed to you as life. On top of that, it grants two levels to minion gems socketed in it, perfect for animated guardian inspectors along with their supports. For the weapon slot, as hinted in the build overview, the best and only option here is Montegru's Grasp Scepter. While it halves the number of zombies when well rolled, it also doubles their damage, so nothing really changes here. In addition, it also gives them a huge amount of HP and resistances. Lastly, it causes enemies killed by zombies to explode and deal fire damage in a small area around them. This actually scales with all the minion damage modifiers, so in practice it will single-handedly clear entire packs after a single monster dies. One thing you need to keep in mind here is that the half number of zombies is always rounded down, so if you could normally summon 11 of them, when using this scepter you would only get 5. In the offhand, a basic shield should have 35 plus strength, 70 plus maximum life and 50 total elemental resistances. A mid-tier shield is also a rare one with pretty much the same affixes as the basic version but with higher numeric values. Ideally, it should have an energy shield base to further boost your effective HP. For best in slot, the optimal choice is Waka Tutuki Omatua, which greatly increases the effect of your auras on minions. Considering a lot of their damage comes from auras, this is quite a strong DPS bonus. It also grants plus 3 levels to socketed minion gems and for this reason you should play Skitterbots, Holy Relic and Carrion Golem in this shield. Each of these gems gets a solid effectiveness increase with additional levels and they don't need to be linked anywhere else anyway. Finally, every time you block, you and your minions get a life regeneration buff amounting to 5% of max HP. And last but not least, a well rolled one will add about 600 energy shield which is always more than welcome. The basic body armor should have a bit of strength, 60 or so life and 50 plus total elemental resistances. For both mid and best in slot tiers, the only real option is the magnificent Joffrey Sanctuary. Apart from a solid amount of all resistances and life, it provides 2 energy shield for each 5 strength you have. And it just so happens that you are stacking about a thousand of those, so you end up with a huge amount of energy shield from this item alone. You also get Zealot's Oath Keystone, which will convert all life regen into energy shield regen. In practice, this will make it so you very rarely drop all the way to HP and when that happens, zombie sleeching will keep you alive. Similar to other gear pieces, on basic gloves you're looking for some strength, 60 plus life and elemental resistances. Mid tier and best in slot are one and the same item, the Shaper's Touch gloves. These provide a somewhat similar benefit as the body armor, namely 2% increased maximum energy shield for each 10 strength. All in all, more energy shield for no real additional investment. Look for some with as much base energy shield as you can afford. With boots, the choices are quite simple. Basic and mid tier ones are a pair of bones of Uller. They improve your zombies and specters, but keep in mind that these boots are by no means the optimal or final item for this build. The best in slot choice is a pair of Alberon's Warpath for the insane amount of strength that it provides through its unique bonus of up to 80% increased strength. In practice this translates to about 150 strength, way more than any other single item would normally have. Without this it's almost impossible to reach the 1000 mark, so look for them early on. They also come with a decent 20% movement speed and some chaos resistance, both more than welcome additions. Moving on to the bell slot, a basic one needs about 50 strength, 60 plus life and resistances. A mid-tier one has pretty much the same affixes but with higher numeric values and some energy shield as well. Finally, for best in slot you want all these on a Stygian Vice belt which comes with an extra abyssal socket. Jewels are a great way of boosting your minions damage or HP as well as plugging any resistance hole you might have. However, the top priority remains stacking up strength and you should not sacrifice that just for obtaining an additional socket. With basic amulets, it's the same familiar story, strength, life and resistances, as much as you can afford for each. Similar for mid tier, same affixes, higher numeric values and some additional energy shield. And as best in slot, your optimal choice is Astramentis. This will provide a huge amount of strength but also dexterity and intelligence, each very useful for this build. Beyond pure attributes, these also translate into about 250 life, 600 energy shield as well as around 10,000 DPS for each zombie. Also, Blight League has introduced a new crafting method called Anointing, which uses oils dropped from Blight monsters to add a notable passive to amulets without changing the item in any other way. For this particular build, the best option is Atmos Strength, helping you get more than 100 strength, life and energy shield as well as a hefty amount of DPS for your zombies. If you don't need any additional strength, then Written in Blood or Influence are two other good choices. Do note however that it's not yet confirmed if anointing will become a standard crafting method once Blight League is over. 
Moving on to rings, for the basic tier you know the drill. 40 plus strength, 60 plus life and over 50 total elemental resistances. In addition to that, on one of your rings you'll need an extra mandatory affix, adds X to Y lightning damage to attacks. This will cause your shield charge to deal a small amount of lightning damage to enemies, triggering elemental equilibrium and lowering their fire and cold resistances. Since a large portion of your zombies damage is fire and cold, this small affix has a huge impact on your overall DPS. This can also be easily crafted using a hideout bench as long as the ring has an open prefix. If you're unfamiliar with these concepts, check out my basic crafting video guide by clicking on that I think in the upper right corner. However, bear in mind that the opposite is also true. If you deal any kind of fire or cold damage yourself, then you'll increase the enemy's resistance to those elements, directly lowering your zombie's DPS. Check shield charges tooltip and if it deals any fire or cold damage, replace whatever item provides that. Meteor rings are pretty similar to the basic ones but with some additional energy shield and higher numeric values for these affixes. Finally, best in slot ones should have all these on unset ring bases. The extra gem socket is really useful for some additional good to have utility skills such as convocation or desecrate. Up next are jewels, a very important component of this build. First we have 3 pieces of efficient training placed in the sockets located north, east and west of the witch starting area. Their positioning is really important as these jewels transform the intelligence from the passives you have actually taken into strength. So it's not enough for those passives to be present in the jewels radius, they need to have actual points invested in them. This is completely different than the way other jewels normally work in respect to attribute points inside their radius. The three locations that I've indicated are the absolute optimal in terms of strength gains for this build so don't place them anywhere else. The rest of the sockets in the passive tree should be filled with brawn jewels until you reach 1000 strength. Look for ones with 6% increased strength and the lowest amount of reduced intelligence. Depending on how good your gear is and if you're already able to get a thousand strength, you can replace a few or all brawn jewels with ghastly eye. The most important stats on these are minions life leech, minions have a chance to blind on hit and minion movement speed. Other useful stats such as life or various minion damage affixes are always welcome. Moving on to flasks, there aren't unfortunately any minion specific ones for some strange reason, so you'll be using them mostly as utility and defensive tools for yourself. The first flask is a bubbling eternal life flask of Stonechin. Instant healing is a real lifesaver and bleeding removal is absolutely mandatory while mapping. Second one is Rumi's concoction. Increased block chance is always welcome and if you pair it with Waka Tutuki's shield, you'll trigger its huge life regen buff far more often. Up next is a chemist quicksilver flask of adrenaline to help you move around faster. Since your boots only have 20% movement speed, this flask will offset that downside to some extent. Fourth is an experimenter sulfur flask of wording. This is pretty much the only flask which provides some benefits to minions through consecrated ground mostly for life regeneration. Wording suffix is also mandatory while mapping for curse removal and immunity. If you've ever crawled around on maps with temporal chains curse, you understand exactly why. For the last flask I recommend the chemist basol flask of heat for some additional physic damage reduction as well as freeze immunity. Now as promised in the gem section, I will also briefly cover the best gear for your animated guardian. The cheap setup is made out of Leercast helmet, Dying Breath stuff, Victarious flight boots, Maginor's vice gloves and any rare or cheap unique body armor that provides large amounts of life and resistances. For the optimal gear, replace the weapon with Kingmaker's axe and the body armor with Grathkul's pelt. Add a rare helmet with nearby enemies take 9% increased physical damage affix which can be obtained through crafting using a jagged fossil. These items are clearly more expensive but with this gear your animated guardian will have around 80,000 HP and I haven't seen one die until now so I feel like the investment is worth it. To wrap up the gearing section here are some excellent leveling uniques that will help you easily progress through the campaign. With the gearing out of the way it is time to take a final look at the pros and cons of the build so you can better understand if it's what you're looking for. Starting off with the pros. A very tanky build between life and energy shield you end up with over 10,000 effective HP. Add 45 buff, zombies life leech, significant energy shield regen and the fact that you have an army of bodyguards around you and you obtain something really hard to kill. One of the easiest summoner builds to play. Many players that would like to try out a minion build are generally taken aback by their complexity. With this build you get to experience that playstyle without much hassle. If anything it's easier to play than most builds of any kind. An excellent hardcore build you have to play really carelessly to get even close to dying. It can run all the current game content including Uber Elder with a bit of minion micromanagement through convocation. Really cheap build considering its performance. For similar defenses and DPS most builds need to invest 3 or 4 times as much currency in high end items. As for the cons, 
Minions AI is not exactly brilliant, while it has been improved significantly with Blight Leak, there are still some pending issues. The Labyrinth feels quite awkward with all the minions covering traps and getting in the way. They make very quick work of the boss itself, but getting there is sometimes a bit of a challenge. It is not able to run two map modes. More specifically, Physical Damage Reflect will kill your zombies and No Mana Regen prevents you from using Shield Charge. That means no Elemental Equilibrium, no Fortify, no Holy Relic Explosion and so on. You can power through these maps, but I strongly recommend to reroll or skip. Finally, there's the summoner playstyle. This is not everyone's cup of tea as it might seem a bit lazy or uninvolved. On the other hand, some people want exactly that and since you've made it so far, I'll assume you're one of them. Learn anything new, Exile? If you did, then you'll probably be happy to hear that there are more videos coming up in the near future with more exciting builds to try. Make sure not to miss them by subscribing to the channel so you get notified when that happens. And while you're at it, why not like this video as well or drop a comment down below to let me know your thoughts. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.